Proverbs chapter 23 verse 13 withhold not correction from the child for if thou beatest him with a rod he shall not die and we already said that pure love of a parent not going to give the child their full correction love will cut it short thou shalt beat him with a rod Does it say B L T? B E L T? Does it say with a R U L E R? Does it say with the back of your hand? What's the Bible say? It says a rod. Listen, this is the word of instruction. How do I have a godly life? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, I'll correct my child and I'll use a belt. It's not what it says. And there's one particular part of the body that God has designed for that correction. It's the part that sits down. That's seated in a seat. Not the neck, not the face, not the back, not the stomach. See, if we follow the Bible, we do okay. And shall deliver his soul from hell. Deuteronomy 21, 20. In the Old Testament, there was a penalty that if you had a wicked son, he would be stoned and would die and go into hell. A child that is unruly has not been corrected. My son, speaking to Rehoboam, or if God speaking to us, his children, if thy heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice, even mine. It's a father. You know, if you got wisdom towards God, it's going to bring me joy. Yea, my reign shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. What controls me will be joyful and great. And if you do right in God, God who controls me will be pleased. And will be pleased with me as your father. Speaking right things. Oh, we've spoken about the lips and the tongue and words. 22 chapters, now into 23 and a half. Let not thy heart envy sinners. But be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Psalm 73, 1 through 6, and verses 11 through 17. What is the opposite of fear of the Lord? It's envy. The religious leaders, according to Pilate in Jesus' time, brought Jesus to his judgment because of envy. There was no fear of God. And when you look at somebody who is doing good, evilly, wickedly, you're not loving God. You're not trusting God. Fear God all day long. And it doesn't tell you which day. It doesn't say just Sunday. All day long. 365 days in the year, 366 when it's the leap day. You are to fear the Lord and not envy. Because you've got something they don't. Eternal life. You've got something they don't. You are a member of God's family. You're going to look at their riches or their house or their business. Whoopie doo doo doo. That's all going to burn up, Peter said. You're going to get a mansion. You're just taking your eyes off it. You're going to get streets of gold. You just haven't read that in a long time. You're going to get pearly gates. You lost the vision. 
That guy, what you're staring at, he needs to get a plumber, electrician, or a carpenter. You will not need any of those things in glory. For surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. There's an end to the, to the sinner's stuff. But if you fear the Lord, there will be no cutting off. As we're getting to the John study now, what we talked about today, you can lose rewards. And envy can be one of them tools Satan uses. Something made Demas go back. Mark went back. I you know he got right, but he went back. And you know the Bible doesn't even record why those two men turned away from God? You just become a loser. Expectation, Titus 2.13, 2, uh, 2, the Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed hope, his coming. You keep your eyes off of envy and evil things, listen, you're going to be wanting. Matter of fact, the more evil you see in this world, the more you should want the Lord to come. Listen, I think people are strange creatures. And I have been charged with hatred, but I still go out there and tell them the gospel until the Lord comes. Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thy heart in the way. Uh-oh. <clears throat> you have to reign your heart. And Paul tells us it is a battlefield between the flesh and the spirit, and they two cannot go together. You've got to be godly wise and not worldly wise. And you've got to take your heart, and you've got to command it. To go in the way. And Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. Now, advertising 1 John 2.16 will guide your heart to what is wrong. And your lustful appetite. It'll take you out of the way. It'll make you envy of whatever is on that screen or that billboard. I don't have that. I need that. You know, if you were to die today, or if you were to be raptured today, what's those three bank accounts and stocks and bonds going to do for you? Be not among wine bibbers. Look at my note here. They lack self control. And the guy of the heart I gave you the wrong reference was Proverbs 4.23. Even the wrong reference on that. I gotta line my notes properly. Be not among wine bibblers. They lack self control. Among riotous eaters of flesh. Hmm. You mean pie eating contest? Who can eat the most hot dogs? Have a little wine with your dinner? Their whole life is, is, is to cause a stir? Now listen, I cause a stir at work. I'm going to serve God and do right. But here are people, you know, that they, they, they drink a little and... and you know, they, they cause troubles and problems and they eat flesh. Boo. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. He wastes his money. 
It's overindulgence of what your body needs. Beer is water. The fermentation that they overcharge you. You waste your money. Just get yourself a bottle of water. You want yeast? And you want a uh, rye and a bar, get yourself a bottle of water and a muffin or a donut. <laughs> Glutton. It's eating too much. Wine bibblers. You're just drinking old grape juice. That's all it is. And drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. And that's America today. They're drunkard, they're gluttoning, and there's no work. So America will end in poverty and rags. That's what the government's doing to her fine people. Meanwhile, taxing you more and more. Listen, we got people today who want to work. They're hardworking and they're unable. And that's a fact. Hearken unto thy father that beget thee. Kind of hard in America today when you don't even know who your father is. We've gone away from the family. We've got girls that will sleep around with everyone and anyone and can't keep track. We've got the men that will take off from the responsibility. And you think they're going to give you good advice? They started their life as a fatherhood as poor advice. Leave, take off. And despise not thy mother when she is old. I got a note there, I can't. What do you say? The government is raising our children today. You don't need your parents. Let, let us take care of you. You used to have to, you know, put your child in kindergarten. And now you got preschool, and then you got all these other programs for before pre preschool. Now we got daycare. By the truth, the King James 1611 authorized Bible, buy it, and sell it not. That should be the last thing you should want to pawn. If you have to pawn everything in your life, your Bible should be the last, and you know what, it says sell it not. And also wisdom. Well, how do you buy wisdom? You pay your preacher. You pay your church. Your offerings pay for the preacher. We got preachers today are not living off the church. That's wrong. It pays for the electricity, the air conditioning, the heating, the, the plumbing. And anything that needs to be fixed in the church. That you can gather in nice comfortable pews and hear the word of God being preached.
and instruction. Sunday school. Sunday school is not the preaching time. It's to sit down and go verse by verse through the Bible. The wisdom of preaching is, is to rebuke and exhort and show you where you're wrong. Show you where you're right. Show you what needs to be done. Instructions go through verse through verse of the Bible to learn what the Bible says. The customs and the ways and how to and how not. Exactly what we're doing right now. We're going through every verse of the proverb. We've been going through every verse since Genesis 1 to Proverbs 23. And there are times I get into preaching. And understanding your relationship to God. Now mark in your Bible when you find wisdom, knowledge, and understanding all in three places in the same verse. This one here is instruction. The relationship your life has to God. You know, I can go to work. But what is the wisdom and understanding I should have about going to work and getting a paycheck and, and stuff like that? How should I work? What should I do with my paycheck? How many hours should I work? How much is too much hours taken away from God or taken away from the family? The father of righteous shall greatly rejoice. And that's not a capital F. That is a human dad where their son is righteous. He shall rejoice. God thinks it's puke when a father, earthly father, will rejoice because their son, son took a ball and did something with it. Whoopie do. Whether out in you know, outfield or whether through a hoop or uh, over a goal line. So what? That's not righteous. Not if it involves cheating and drugs and everything else. And it implies that the Father here is also right in the Lord. Though even in the back of his mind, the back of his life, if he's got a child who's doing right, well, he may not like that he's saved, he may not like he's a Christian, but you know what? He's doing something right. His name is not in the police blotter in the newspaper. He's not in jail. His wife and children are, are 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 happy. He that begins a wise child should have joy of him. There's too many dummies in the world. And Proverbs twenty two fifteen and Psalm fifty eight three. Wisdom, instruction, and understanding. A dumb child will come up and question when you're trying to help. And mock. Dumb children don't know the Lord and don't want to have anything to do with the Lord. And if you think I'm wrong, then you've got your idol that's not on God. And you've got it on your children. Because salvation is so simple. Only a dummy would re refuse it. The way of the Lord is so simple. The f thy father... No, wait a minute. Yeah. No, wait a minute. 25. Thy father and thy mother shall be glad. I don't know why I think of the garbage bag company. The black garbage. I mean, I don't know why you would name such a thing, but that's a complete opposite of this verse. 
It wouldn't be the garbage. It would be the, the honor, great. Boasting. Speaking to others about. And she that bear thee shall rejoice. More than glad. More than just the father, but the mother having her own personal rejoicing. There are many mothers today that are on their knees for their children. And it's not for gladness, it's not for rejoicing. It is either because they are lost and going to hell, or they're just not living for the Lord being saved. And child, saved or lost, because your conduct is not giving gladness and rejoicing to your mother, you will give an account to God. You think God's just going to bypass that? You think God's going to bypass your mother's tears? You think all that time your mother prayed for you that it's just worthless in the eyes of God while you keep on rebellion? You better get your heart right. Hear thou, my son, and be wise and guide thy heart in the way. We're speaking to children now. And there is one thing I need to teach and I need to get out. You are going to be judged at either judgment. And you need to be realized what you will be judged for. In detail. And you don't want to be lost. And I mean lost. I don't mean your soul. If you're saved. I mean loss of rewards. Pick up on this. Uh, the, uh, the second John epistle study I have as we're going to be going into the judgment seat of Christ in the crown a mother the Bible says should be glad and rejoice and if she is not because of, of her child ooh, you better watch out for God the Father let me step it over one thing too more. I'll move on. If that woman is not glad and rejoicing because of what her husband, you, you in big trouble. My son, talking to children, give me thy heart. Your earthly father. He's in charge of you. You don't see God the Father, but you should see God the Father in your earthly father. And I said over here, you know, thou shalt correct him with a rod. You know, you shouldn't be surprised when God corrects you. You should already be brought up by your parents. Oh, if I do wrong, just as I do wrong to God as I did to my mom and dad, there's going to be a consequence. There are Christians today that God will get the rod out and they're like, what the heck was that? Well, that's God correct you. Uh, Hebrews 13, I think it is. 12 or 13. What do you do that for? There's no discipline. There's no proper parenting today. It's supposed to be child rearing. Do right or red butt. And let thy eyes observe my ways. You know what that says? Dad. Dad. Christian dad. You know what that says? You are to walk right. That your children are to follow you. What kind of example are you setting Sunday morning? You're out with a gun or a fishing rod. Or you're working too many hours. Or not spending enough money on the family and the Lord.
that has had a life experience of mistakes that he's trying to teach you not to make. And too many often times the child will not listen and he'll make the same mistakes his father did and learn from the mistakes and he'll try to train his children and it's just a vicious cycle of rebellion. And you look back when you're old age like I am and say, why didn't I listen? And you look at your children, why won't they listen? Because it says, observe my ways. You know why your children won't listen? Because you didn't listen. Abraham said one day, uh, she's my sister. What did Isaac say? And Isaac wasn't even born. You know, parents, when you smoke and drink, you are setting an example for your children. Don't go crying to the preacher later on when they're drunk or, they're, or they're, they won't quit smoking. Be not deceived, God's not marked whatsoever a man sows, that he shall also reap. You might reap it in your own children. You may have to watch over the hospital bed of your children dying of cancer because of what you did. Oh, I never got cancer. Yeah, yeah. May God will say, I'll pass it over to you when you watch. You know, Abraham took Isaac up to the mountain because of God's honor and glory. Some of these parents take their children up to the mountain for their own fleshly lust. You'll find out the judgment seat. You'll find out that you were wrong. We move on. We go over this and he breaks for he says, For he whores a deep ditch. And a strange woman is a narrow pit. All right, we've got over the wisdom, we got over the understanding, we got now. Let's work into what the heart of a of a young man is: sex. How do you know? Look at the billboards and advertising. Sex everywhere. Sex and booze. By the way, it became Solomon's sin. He didn't adhere to his own advice. She also lies in wait as for a prey, we studied that before, and increased the transgressions of men. Judges 16. My son, give me thy heart. And let that eyes observe my ways. Father, don't you dare teach your children that to go after another woman. That's right. That's the context right after he writes that. But yet Solomon failed. You know, because what David did with Bathsheba, he couldn't discipline Amon. You know, there's going to be some sins in your life, parents. You will not be able to discipline your child because you know what? That child will point the finger in your face and you're a hypocrite. And I know for myself, there are some things I can't talk to my parents about. Because my parents will have the rightful thing to point their finger in my face, even though it's under the blood. They say, you're a hypocrite. You did that. You know why a preacher over there has such a long list of things you're to be and not to be? And your character is to be pure. That somebody can't come up and say, point the finger in your face. Well, you preach that message. And mm -hmm. Now we're going to end there. We're going to take the rest of the chapter in its own little private thing. But we'll close there with the children. What about the children? What about the parents? 